joined by the Colgate head coach and some of their student athletes. We'll take a, a statement from the coach first and then we'll take questions for the student athletes. Coach? Um, yeah, I think the first and most important thing is um, credit to Wisconsin, you know, Big Ten champions. They played a lot of close games and I, I think we saw the result of all those close games uh, tonight. I think the second thing, I've been a lot of great venues in this country, Cameron Indoor Stadium, the Palestra, Rupp Arena, Fog Island Fieldhouse. I don't think I've ever been in an environment better than the one for a college basketball game tonight. I know that typically doesn't happen in NCAA tournament games, um, but just like last year when we played in a bubble and had an incredibly unique experience, I think this is one that our guys, although doesn't sit well right now, will remember for a long, long time. Uh, Thanks, Coach. Oh, go, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Just really proud of, of the effort, the uh, the competitive instincts that they showed, how they played together and fought right till the end. I'm not surprised in any way, shape, or form by the performance that uh, they put on out there tonight. All right, thanks, Coach. Questions for the student athletes, please. Tucker, you were on quite a roll early in the second half, and then, you know, I don't know if they changed something. What, 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 what happened after that? What did they do differently against you, if anything? Um, I don't really know. I mean, I'd have to go back and watch. I was definitely feeling it for a little bit there, but um, I'm not trying to take any shots that aren't the team shots. I think I even forced a couple after that that I probably shouldn't have. So um, I think that they locked in a little bit more onto me, but nothing too crazy. Just wanted to keep playing in the flow of the game, I guess. Just to any of y'all, what was y'all's confidence level at halftime there? You'd tell me you'd forced to tie. I mean, how good were y'all feeling going in? And just, again, what was there anything that differently or just shots not falling down the stretch after that? Uh, we were re really confident the whole game. And going into halftime, I think the score was tied. So we were very excited about the opportunity in front of us. But like you said, some shots didn't fall down the stretch, and they made some shots. So. The result is what it is. Nellie, you had the basket right at the end, to, at the end of the first half, to tie it. How big was that for you guys heading into the second half to kind of allow for Tucker to have the momentum? I think it was good because they were making a run as well, so it felt like we weathered the storm and we were able to go into halftime with score tied and like basically like it's a fresh start to the game, basically. So. For Tucker, there was a sequence there at the end of that 10 nothing run. You shot a three-pointer. It looked like you thought you might have gotten some contact, and then they break out for the dunk on the other end. Just how critical was that sequence there at the end of that run? How, just how much of a turning point was that for you? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it was a big play. I, I didn't really get hit. I got hit just a little bit. It wasn't, you know, I can't blame the refs or anything. It wasn't anything that they did wrong. So um, definitely like a little momentum turner, but. Um, you know, we always try and just stay in the game, so we could have easily still found a way to grit it out. Um, they just made more plays than we did at the end. Well, let's ask Jack a question. So since he made the trip over, uh, just can you talk about your, your emotions of, of this game and the outcome? Yeah, um, my initial emotions are really frustrated, but also extremely proud of, you know, what we've been able to do in my career. Um, that I've, now that I've had a little bit of time to reflect, it's going to be you know, emotional leaving all these guys, but I'm super proud of everything we were able to do in the past five years. All right, thanks, guys. You're free to go, and then we'll take questions for Coach. Matt. Matt, I think you had 24 points on 14 possessions to start the second half, and then I think you went nine without one. Did you see anything differently, whether it was anything your team was doing or anything Wisconsin was doing to, to keep you from scoring? Yeah, I, I, th I mean, I think Wisconsin, you know, amped up their defensive intensity a little bit more. Um, you know, Tucker got loose a couple times. They weren't going to let him get loose anymore. The game got a little bit more physical, um, as you would expect from a Big Ten champions uh, in the guts of a close game. And, you know, I thought we had some chances one-on-one -on -one inside that we, we weren't able to um, to finish, you know, uh, there were some, some plays that we, we didn't get to the free throw line. 
um, which you have to do when they're extending their pressure and not playing as much help defense. And so, you know, we weren't able to make those plays, and, and they, you know, led to opportunities down the other end. I thought they, they were really effective in the paint in the second half. I thought that, uh, you know, in the first half we kind of neutralized that if, if, didn't, if we didn't exceed their, their paint scoring. And um, I thought that was the difference of the game in the back, back part of the second half. Coach, Tyler Wall was giving you guys a lot of trouble, especially in the second half, but had a lot of um, some of those intangible plays in the first half. Can you just comment on Tyler Wall's performance tonight? Yeah, Tyler Wall is an extraordinary college basketball player in my mind. Uh, I think that you know a lot of guys on the team get a, a lot of credit for, for due reason, but he, um, we, we call him winning plays, and Tyler Wall <laughs> makes a lot of winning plays. That being said, I think you know he got 15 points, but it took him 18 shots, which is not not normal for him. So uh, he's usually a very efficient player. So I, you know he he definitely impacted the game and you know got some loose balls and some offensive rebounds and and helped them win the game like he has so many times this season. Uh, but I thought to for him to get 15 points on on 18 field goal attempts was was kind of where we needed it to be that one to one ratio. We're gonna try to take a question from Zoom, please. This is uh, Daniel Rodriguez with uh, This League with Daniel in Miami. Um, hey, Coach, uh, we, we spoke earlier in the week about what it meant to be into, in the tournament. Um, my question is, what do you take from this experience and how proud of you uh, for the team and the way they competed tonight and what they accomplished this season? Thanks for your question, Daniel. Uh, I'm immeasurably proud of this group. I told them in the locker room I'm, I'm no less proud of them for their performance tonight than um, – you know, when we won the championship in front of our home crowd uh, to, to get this opportunity. Uh, I think the experience is one that, that they'll remember for the guys coming back. It'll, it'll only add, you know, fuel to the fire to continue to do what they've been doing and working hard to, to prepare themselves to compete for championships. And, uh, you know, again, I think if you're, if you're consistent enough in your approach and, and, and continue to knock on the door that uh, eventually, um, you know, luck, luck favors the prepared and, and things go your way. So that's what I know our guys coming back will continue to do. Matt, the crowd got loud a bunch of times tonight, but your players didn't seem to buckle. Were there any moments where you thought you had to try and calm them down or anything like that? Anything that sticks out in your head as being a, a key moment in, in terms of getting your guys to settle down? No, it's just, uh, no, no, I mean, they've been through so much. And so, no, the, they weren't rattled at any, at any point in the game. But the crowd has an impact on the game. There's no doubt about it. We're all human beings. And, you know, you can feel the energy and emotion. And, you know, the, every, everybody involved in the game, the players and the officials, are, are all humans. And, and we, we react to energy and emotion. And so, um, the, the crowd was fantastic. Uh, I thought the energy throughout the game was was incredible, um, but my guys weren't rattled, and I I didn't. That wasn't a concern. We knew we would be, you know, uh, we we wouldn't be the the team everybody was rooting for. But I I, I never questioned whether they would you know fracture or or, uh, or or anything like that. Coach, thanks very much. Appreciate right, it. Thank you. And a reminder that all of these press conferences are being recorded and they're available at the NCAA Digital Hub at ncaaveritone.com. That's V-E-R-I-T-O-N-E. -E. Transcripts available as soon as possible and will be posted shortly. We'll have news conferences tomorrow to preview Sunday's games. Thanks for joining us.